My name is Kusaku Motekin from Jam Step in Japan. And uh, I'd like to propose a hypothesis for the uh, east west propagation, uh, propagation scenario of the MG road. And this is a case study on the first MGO observed during the observation campaign called Shinji 2011 Dynamo over the Indian Ocean like this. Uh, this is uh, this MGO propagating uh, was propagated eastward at at the phase speed of six meter per second, uh, like this time longitude cross section of IR, time longitude cross section of IR by color scale. And uh, western winds, western wind speed by black counters, and the onset date of this MGO is 20, uh, 21st October, and this MGO propagates eastward like this at the phase speed of six meter per second, and the western winds clearly uh, follows the MGO like this, and uh, uh, it uh, shifted eastward. Uh, from the central Indian Ocean to the maritime continent for the for 20 days. And although uh, several papers on this case have already been published, uh, nobody describes on this extraterrestrial cyclone to the south uh, that is completely synchronized with the this MGO propagation. So that that is that they have the same speed, phase speed of six meter per second. Or in other words, uh, uh, this, I, I was just wondering why this anti driving anticyclone, anticyclone follows this extraterrestrial cyclone uh, is synchronizing with this MGO propagation. This is uh, my motivation. So. Uh, my recent uh, two papers uh, propose a hypothesis on this uh, MGO propagation. Uh, so the question is: the is the extratropical cyclone is a, a, a triggering factor to the uh, MGO propagation? So uh, this is the uh, this is this figure shows the geopotential height anomaly at. 850 hectopascal by color scales and sea level pressure blue, blue contest OLR by red counter and uh, you can see that uh, uh, MGO convection here and uh, we, it, it associated with the uh, negative uh, geopotential height anomaly and the western winds over the central Indian Ocean and uh, 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 and the question is: there, Are there any inter, uh, any coupling processes between the, uh, this MGO and uh, extraterrestrial cyclone? And how can we uh, see that? Uh, and uh, so, to see that, in order to think about the uh, uh, coupling processes, uh, normalized geopotential height anomaly is used for this in this study. Uh, uh, usually, we define uh, some anomaly as a difference from some <coughs> average. However, uh, the variation of geopotential height is severely dependent on the ratios. So uh, the geopotential height, uh, the, the meridional amplitude difference effects should be normalized by the variance to see the fields across the tropics and the extratropics. So uh, we are taking a, a, a this kind of uh, variance and uh, this kind of average uh, to make a normalized geopotential height anomaly. And such anomaly from the Japanese 50 year real analysis data set is used for this study. Of course, the intensive obs observation from Shinji Dynamo project were completely assimilated into this data set. So using this data set, uh, the time longitude cross section uh, no, of the geopotential height anomaly, normalized geopotential height anomaly by colors uh, sh is shown here 
to see the synchronization between the equator and the extratropics. So, uh, so this uh, middle panel is for the equator. You can see that the energy of convection uh, uh, by, red, uh, by the red contest of OLR indicates the uh, eastward propagation, right, like that. And the uh, western winds uh, follows the MJO like this. And uh, the light panel shows, uh, light panel <coughs> for the 10 degrees south and the 30 degrees south shows the negative geopotential height anomaly of the extratropical cyclone uh, that is synchronized with the MGO propagation here. However, to uh, the left panel to the nose, there is no coherent feature with the energy of propagation. So uh, uh, this uh, coherent negative geopotential height anomaly uh, at 800, 850 hectopascal is shown only in the southern hemisphere. Uh, so this, this synchronization between the MGO and the extratropical cyclone in the south is a very notable fact. So on the basis of this notable fact, uh, uh, looking, looking back the horizontal distribution of the geopotential height no, that is normalized at, at 850 hectopascal by Carlos, and uh, the MGO and the extratropical cyclone makes here uh, across the uh, uh, seeing across the tropics and the extratropics, uh, MGO and uh, extratropical cyclone makes a large meridional trough, and the large meridional ridge appears to the west, like this. And the thinking about the zonal pressure gradient force between the ridge and trough, uh, western winds uh, naturally uh, intensified or accelerated and the uh, convergence zone ahead of the western winds uh, may, should make a uh, uh, combined ascending area like this. This is an uh, ascending area, uh, an ascending vertical pressure velocity by cars. And uh, you can see that the ascending area of the cold front from the extratropical cyclone and the MGO here is combined, uh, combined and behind the M ascend large ascending area uh, there is a, a cold, southerly cold advection here. This is uh, northward cold advection is uh, shown by blue, blue colors and uh, subsidiary wind vectors. So, uh, the be behind the uh, ascending area, large ascending area, uh, uh, northward, uh, there is northward cold advection here, and it should make a higher geopotential height anomaly. And, and it should make uh, it uh, a higher geopotential height anomaly pushes. Uh, pushes the MGO eastward. So six days after, on fourth uh, November, fourth November, uh, from uh, 29 October, six days after, this is six days after fourth November. Uh, the uh, the pair of the meridional ridge and trough shifted eastward like this. And uh, 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 western winds expand uh, eastward by the pressure gradient force between ridge and trough. This is not natural things. And uh, you can see, easily see that uh, the MGO convection also shifted eastward like this uh, with ascending, a uh, large ascending area ahead of the uh, Western wind, western wind area. So, uh, 
So uh, finally, uh, let me summarize the hypothesis uh, of this study. Uh, the point of this uh, hype, uh, of this study is eastward propagation uh, is very natural if coupling occurs because the mid ratchet barbarinic waves always propagate eastward. So, uh, how can it uh, coupling with each other? So, however, usually the MGO develop over the Indian Ocean develops make, uh, develops between the mas masculine high to the south and the Eurasia high to the north. So this was one of blocking to the uh, passage of the uh, extratropical cyclone usually. And uh, uh, usually uh, coupling is, is not a cut. However, uh, after decaying of the masculine high to the south, uh, extratropical cyclone can travel into the south subtropics and can uh, coupling with the MGO. <laughs> After that, uh, uh, large ascending area uh, in uh, of the meridional large uh, uh, large meridional trough and. Uh, and the ascend, large ascending area uh, behind that, behind the large ascending area, of uh, there is a uh, there is a cold advection from the south, and it makes uh, a higher geotensional height anomaly behind the MGO, and it so and it naturally pushes uh, the MGO eastward by the pressure gradient force. So that's conclusion of this paper. And if you have <coughs> any just, I have 20 reprints of this paper to give you. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Question for you. Yeah, this is uh, nice work. So the, the, the question I have, why? wouldn't be the other way around. Other. I mean, the other way around. Why not the MJO would be capable of triggering the tropical cyclone? And then that the tropical cyclone would propagate with it. It's not hard to prove this mathematically, that the baroclinic wave can actually project advection by itself into the barotropic mode and excite cyclone-like features that would move with the moving baroclinic uh, winds, and um, that could happen. Sorry, yeah, I couldn't catch up the point of view. So my point. question is, why do you think it's the, it's the cyclone that's actually making the MJO propagate, but not the propagation of the MJO that makes the tropical cyclone happen? Uh, I'm <laughs> not catch up. The, uh, I have the uh, 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 I see the uh, vertical cross section of the MGO and the extratropical cyclone, and it, the extratropical cyclone MGO and MGO is coupled with the below the 500 hectopascal. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, but I I'm I'm not sure uh, the reason the reason why that's specifically. So is the heating from the MJO feeding back also yeah. onto the extra Maybe, but uh, I, I uh, of course there is response from the MGO and the ex ex influence from the extratropical cyclone to the MGO each other. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't uh, uh, I estimate which one is much much, much larger, but uh, uh, mo uh, the both of the effect uh, important for this process. What happened to that little cyclone that was in the northern hemisphere? Little cyclone. 
uh, the small one to the north, right there. Small one? Uh, uh, that was that was a uh, uh, kind of loss we were response to, and, and going to the just just going to west one. Yeah. But so was that, that more of a response to the NGO. Yeah, and uh, that, that was on, on just response. Yeah, yeah, Korea response. Okay. Uh, but this extra cyclone Korea from the uh, far from the yeah. uh, southern tip of Africa. So that's not. Just that uh, right. response. Yeah. So I guess that's part of the point. That was that was there. Yes. Before the MJO. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Hit the strong guy, but maybe there was some feedback. <laughs> also, uh, you normalize by variance or standard deviation? Uh, usually. Yes, it's, it's a a like a standard de deviation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's a yes. typical z score. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you very much.